Hey, welcome to the Low Code Show. I'm your host, Russell Youngblood. And in this episode, episode number 10, we are going to build a progressive web application from start to finish. So if you're not exactly sure what a progressive web application is, uh, be sure to do a little bit of research before you check out this video. We're going to set up a scenario and then we'll get started. The scenario will be that we are an auto insurance company that would like to provide our customers with an easy to use mobile application so that they can get their claims started immediately on the scene of an accident. Since we need this application to work on a mobile device, but we really don't know what type of device our customers will have, PWA seems to be a pretty good option. Also, some of the advantages once again will be that there are no app store limitations. It will have online and offline capabilities and it can access the mobile device features such as geolocation and the camera. These options will come in handy on the scene of an accident. So let's go ahead and get started building this progressive web application. So for those of you who may not be as familiar with OutSystems, this is Service Studio, the IDE where we'll build web and mobile applications. To get started, I'll click the new application icon and build the application from scratch. When I click the next button, I can choose a template for the PWA, we'll choose phone, and in this window, we can give the application a name. I'll just give the name Quick Claim, and I'll add an icon for our application. Once I click the Create App button, it'll take me to another window where I can create the first module for the application. Once that's done, we can begin to work on the data and the screens for our application. OutSystems will allow you to connect to just about any data source you can imagine. However, in this example, I'm going to use an accelerator to import an Excel spreadsheet with some simple data points that we'll be working with. Once that's completed, I can now see the entity and all of the attributes that I'll be working with. I can modify this as well and add any other attributes. In this case, I'm going to add one for an image that we'll be able to upload from the application. Now, keep in mind, this PWA will be designed to work online and offline. So in the next step, I'm going to create a local storage entity that will house the same exact data that we just created the other entity for in the database. I'll be sure to check all the attributes and click the Add button, and that creates our local storage entity. Now that we have both of these entities created, we're going to need an action that will synchronize the data between the device and the cloud storage data. So I'm going to use another accelerator that will create all of that action flow for us. Once that's created, all I need to do is just drag and drop it into the, the offline data sync action. One final step, I'll be sure that the app will sync the data when it goes online, and then it will also sync the data when a user logs onto the application. And that should take care of my data synchronization pattern. Now I'll click the one-click publish button and go ahead and publish my work to the server. So let's pause here for a moment and review what we've done so far. We created an application, created the data model for the server, we created the data model for the local storage, and we created the logic to sync the data between the two, probably in a lot less time than it would have taken with more traditional techniques. Now let's take some time and build out the first screen. We'll start on the interface layer, add a screen, and OutSystems has quite a few templates that we can work with. I like this account portal template, but I'm gonna change the name to home screen, and we'll give that a second to load. Once the screen loads in, we can begin to go ahead and start to customize the information on the screen. When it first loads, it has sample data that loads into the application, and that's great for preview, but ultimately what we want to do is go ahead and add our own data. So in the meantime, I'm going to be deleting some of this information that I don't need, and then I can go ahead and begin to drag and drop, uh, for example, an image to the screen. And with that image widget, we'll go ahead and add an image that I already have prepared for the project. We'll import that image. And I like the button, but I want to maybe add an image to the button as well. For this one, we'll just use the same logo image, and I'm going to need to resize that a little bit so it fits in the button. And I think I'll add one other container, and this container will have some text. So I'm going to drag it over to the widget tree, drag the text, and then add the text from the properties panel. And we'll just type your auto claims and then maybe adjust the styles a little bit. We'll make it white and uh, resize maybe the font. Instead of 14, we'll change it on over to maybe 16. 
and that looks pretty good. Okay, so next we want to go ahead and add some actual data to the screen. So I'm going to add a container at the bottom, and then I'll go to the data layer, drag and drop the local auto claim entity, and you can see with one drag and drop, it builds out the list, and I can begin to customize the list. Now, I don't need some of these data points, so I'll go ahead and delete those. And then once again, we can use the widget tree to modify the positioning and continue to move things around and customize this part of the screen. So we'll make that bold. I think I'm going to get rid of the phone number account here. And then uh, I'm also going to change some styles on the image. We'll go to the properties panel for this and delete the existing style. And then maybe make the image just a little bit smaller. Okay, uh, that's it. That looks good. Uh, now, a couple of other things that I'm going to finish up here. Uh, on the top of the screen, I think I would like a button that's going to allow the user to create a new claim. So I'm going to add an icon. We'll search for the plus sign. And then the user will eventually be able to click on this button and create a new claim. Okay. Now, typically when we work from the templates, there's some add additional artifacts that are added. I'm going to go ahead and delete those to clean up the screen so that I have just exactly what I need for the home screen. And there you go. Okay, so now we'll begin to work on the second screen. I'll do the same, right click, add screen, and we'll work from a template. I think I like the detail with charts, so I'll change the name. We'll give it the name Claim Detail and click the Create Screen button. Now, when this screen loads in, you'll notice there's a lot of sample data here, so I'll change the screen title. And this time I'm going to do something a little different. I'll go to the data layer, and I'm going to drag and drop the local storage entity to the screen, and it actually swaps out the sample data with the real data. And I can see here that I now have the latitude showing for this data point. So I'll click Done, and I'll begin to make some further adjustments by adjusting this label. We'll give it the title latitude and then the longitude. And then I'm going to need to go ahead and change this data point so that it points over to the longitude. And that looks good. Now I'll continue customizing the screen by deleting some of this sample text that's still here on the screen. And I'll delete the charts down at the bottom. And in just a few moments, we will begin to add the data that we need for our claim detail. Get rid of this uh, sales information here and these two containers, and that looks good. So now we can begin to add our data. I'll go to the data layer and begin to drag and drop the data points over to the screen as I need them. So maybe the date would be good here. We'll go ahead and add the time of the accident. And uh, one last data point, I think I'll add an indicator on whether or not there was a police report filed for this report. And that looks good. So going to use a style to space these containers out just a little bit. So it looks a little bit cleaner. I believe we have a margin top or a margin bottom that we can use. And maybe continue adjusting some of the styles. We'll go ahead and make some of these text labels bold so that they kind of pop off of the screen. And that should look pretty good. So very quickly, we have a screen that's going to show the claim details here. Looks pretty clean. We we'll need to go back over to the home screen. And from the home screen, we will create a link from each of these list items over to the detail that is associated with that item. So all I need to do is just go ahead and link up the list item with the claim detail screen. And then we'll need to make sure that we're passing the local auto claim ID to that screen. And that's it. That looks pretty good. Now, once again, I'm going to need to go back and clean up some of the artifacts here that were loaded in with the template. So I'll get rid of these aggregates, any local variables, any actions that I don't necessarily need. And uh, that should do the trick. So everything looks pretty good now. And we have our second screen, which should show the claim detail information when the user navigates there. Now that that's complete, let's go ahead and start to work on the third screen. I'll do the same, right click on the main flow, and this time instead of using a template, I'll just create a screen from an empty template. We'll give it the name New Claim, and I'll adjust the title. This will of course be the claim screen where the 
user will add a new claim. And I'm going to go back to the home screen and create a link to the new claim screen that I just created. So they can easily navigate there. And now we begin to work on the new claim screen. So I'll need to add a form. And then I can simply go to the data layer and I can drag and drop the local auto claim entity. And OutSystems does a pretty good job of creating a form for me. I will have to go back and make some adjustments, so I'll use the widget tree. I think I'd like to drop this image down to the bottom of the form. And then also there's some data points down here that I really don't need on this form. So I'll delete those. And once that's taken care of, wouldn't it be nice if the latitude and longitude would automatically load into this phone from the form? And that's what we're going to do with a Forge component. So I'm navigating to the Manage Dependencies window looking for the Reactive Geolocation Library. I'm going to add that. Once I click the Apply button, I'll be able to use that Forge component in my application. And you can see it here under the Logic layer. So here's the Git Current Location component. Notice it has two output parameters, so I can use those. And the way I can use those is by using the on after fetch action on the local entity. I can drag and drop this component, and then I'll need to add an assign statement that assigns the variable latitude and longitude to the corresponding outputs from this component. Okay, so I'll drill down into the list current local claim latitude data point, and I'll make sure that it is set to the output of latitude from the component. And then I'll do the same thing for the longitude. So I'll select that and then make sure that it's mapped to the longitude. And now I'm able to access these coordinates from the device using that component. There's one last error. Notice that I have an on-click error. I simply need to add a button action. So before I do that, I'll go ahead and change the text of the button. We'll change it to save claim. And then I can simply double click on the button that creates the action and I can begin to work on the action flow. So for this one, I'm going to use the creator update local action. I'll drag and drop it to the action flow. And then once they have uh, submitted that claim, then I want to redirect them over to the home screen. We'll send them back on over to the home screen. So I'll select that screen and this looks good. That should take care of inserting the new claim into the local storage. And then, of course, we'll need to sync, sync that uh, local storage. So back to the home screen. Everything's looking pretty good here. I have a list of the claims. have the claim detail, the new claim screen created. So I'll publish this, and we'll take a look at it. But instead of previewing in the browser, Let's take a look at the ways in which we can distribute our application. Now, we could go the traditional route, and we could export as an iOS application or an Android app, or we could simply toggle this little toggle button here and create a progressive web application. Now, once we do that, uh, you should see a QR code, so we can scan that with the device, and here we can see a list of the claims. We can click on each claim, go to the claim detail screen, and review the details. To test on the device, I'm going to create a new claim. So I'll click the new claim button and I'll enter the account phone number. I believe I have a description copied to the clipboard, so I'll just paste that here. And then we can choose a date. Should also be able to choose a time. And as you can see, the latitude and longitude is successfully being loaded into the form from the device. And we can also interact with the device's camera capability. So I can either take a photo using my device, or if I'd rather browse to my library, I can upload a photo from the library. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and save this to the database. And then we should be able to see our claim on the list of claims. So let's take just a minute to review what we've done. In the last 15 minutes, we have created a mobile application that is not specific to platform. There are no App Store limitations. It has online and offline capabilities, so we can use this application regardless of whether we're on a network. We can very easily access mobile device features. In this example, we access the geolocation 
as well as the camera functionality and very simple deployment, right? All we needed was a QR code. We could scan that QR code and begin to use and test the application on our device. And finally, what you can always expect from OutSystems, very fast, smooth app performance. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, please subscribe, twitter.com, The Low Code Show, youtube.com, The Low Code Show, and of course, facebook.com, The Low Code Show.